in this lesson, I am going to talk about linear equations. First, what is an equation? An equation is a mathematical statement which tells us that two expressions are equal. So this is an example of an equation. You just have your equality sign here. The value of the variable that will make the equation true is called a solution to the equation. So in our example here, a solution here would be x equals 3 because if x is equal to 3, you have 2 times 3 when you substitute that, that is really equal to 5. So therefore, x equals 3 is a solution. The solution set consists of all the values that make the equation true, meaning to say we just collect all the solutions and put them in one single set. In this equation here, the only solution is x equals 3, so therefore we just enclose that in a pair of braces and that is your solution set. We have two kinds of equations. The first one is an identity equation. An identity equation is just true for all values of the variable. So meaning to say whatever value you plug in for x, the equation would still be true. So for example, 3x equals 2x plus x, this is an identity equation. Whatever value you put for x here, this will always be true. One way to interpret an identity equation is that its solution set is SS. I will denote the solution set by SS. It's just the set of real numbers. On the other hand, a conditional equation from the word itself, it is only true for some values of the variable. So you cannot plug in any real number. So for example, here the solution set is not the set of real numbers. We only have one solution here. The solution set in this case is x is equal to 2, meaning to say it is only true when x is equal to 2, but it is not true if we plug in any number that is not equal to 2. Let us discuss the properties of equality that we will be using in solving linear equations. The first one is our reflexive property. It's just saying that a number is equal to itself. For a symmetric property, it is saying that the order does not matter if you have an equality sign here. A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Transitive property is some sort of a chain. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then that means that the first and the last numbers should also be equal. They are connected by B over here. Here are the two most frequent properties of equality that we will be using in solving linear equations. The first one is the addition property of equality. It's saying that if we have two numbers that are equal and we add same number on both sides, then the resulting equation would still be the same. Moreover, we have our multiplication property. If we have two numbers that are equal and we multiply the same number on both sides of the equation, the resulting equation is still true. Take note that this also holds if you have minus here. Why is that? Why is A minus C the same as B minus C? It's because subtraction is defined to be adding the negative inverse. So B minus C is the same as B plus negative C. So that's why we can also subtract the same number on both sides of the equation. Similarly, I can also divide both sides by C and the resulting equation is still true. Of course, here our assumption is that C is not equal to 0. This is also true because A over C is the same as A times 1 over C and B over C is the same as B times 1 over C. So basically, division is actually multiplication by the reciprocal of the number. Alright? So again, we can always perform the same operation on both sides of your equation and the resulting would always be the same. It can be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Let us go right into the definition of a linear equation. It is an equation which can be written in this form. E x plus b is equal to 0. And take note that you should have only one variable. And the exponent of your variable should be equal to 1. It doesn't have to be necessarily x. As long as you have one variable and the exponent is equal to 1, a and b are 
real numbers. Of course, A should not be equal to 0. For instance, I have 5xy plus 2 equals 0. Is this a linear equation? The exponents are equal to 1. However, we have two variables here. So, this is not a linear equation. Whereas, if we have negative 2 equals 3x, this is a linear equation. I can write it in this form. How? I can add 2 on both sides of the equation. I am using addition property of equality. And therefore, I have 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So it is now exactly of this form. Here are the steps in solving linear equations. The first step is to put all the variables on one side of the equation and all the constants on the other side. So that those are the first two steps. And then we divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the variable. Let's put that into an application. For example, I want to find the solution of this equation using properties of equality. For this example, I will be writing down what properties of equalities are used. We are solving for x, therefore, what do we want? Step 1, put all the constants on one side and all the variables on the other side. So I want to put the plus 3 on the other side. So how can I do that? Using the addition property of equality, I will subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. Now take note, that is the same also as plus negative 3, correct? So anyway, I have 4x plus 3 minus 3, I just have 4x, is equal to 0 minus 3, I have negative 3. We're done with steps 1 and 2, and what's the next step? Divide both sides by the coefficient of your variable, 4, 4. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3 fourths. So take note that when we transpose, we put this on the other side. And what happens with the sign? We get the opposite of your sign. So that's why if you move this here to the other side, it can become negative 3. So you can go directly to 4x equals negative 3 over here. Take note, the transposition is only possible if that term is added or subtracted. Alright? You cannot transpose the 4 here. Why is that? The reason behind transpose is addition property of equality. Let's have a few more examples. Remember that we want to put all the variables on one side of our equation. So therefore... What do we have to do here? We have to distribute first so that we can get rid of this parenthesis here. Distribute, we have 3x plus 3 times 2 is 6 equals 8x plus 1. And then put all the variables on one side. I will now subtract 3x on both sides. That's the same as transposing 3x here. So I have 8x minus 3x is equal to 6. I will transpose 1, or that's the same as subtracting 1 from both sides. So I have 6 minus 1. 8x minus 3x is 5x. 6 minus 1 is 5. So we have now collected all the variables and all the constants on one side. So now we're ready to divide both sides of the equation with the coefficient of x, which in this case is 5. This gets cancelled out. So therefore, x is equal to 5 over 5 is 1. Let's go to our next example again. We just have um, complicated operations here, but it's not that bad. Remember that our goal is to put all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other side. Let me distribute it first. I have 4x minus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 12 is equal to 15. Now note here that when I am distributing, I will include the minus sign already, okay? So this is minus 5 times x, so that's minus 5x. Minus 5 times 6 is minus 30. Put all the variables on one side. I have 4x 
minus 5x. Put it here, so it will become plus 5x. By the way, here, minus 12 and 12 gets cancelled out so that I no longer have to put that on the other side. And there, I'll just copy this. 15 minus 30. 4x plus 5x is 9x is equal to 15 minus 30 is negative 15. And we're now ready to divide both sides by 9. So therefore, x is equal to negative 15 over 9, which can be simplified as negative 5 over 3. In this next example, we have here your denominators 4 and 3. Whenever you have equations involving denominator, you have to get rid first of your denominators. And how do you do that? You multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, or the least common multiple of your denominators. What is the smallest number, which is both divisible by 4 and 3, that is equal to 12? So let's multiply both sides by 12. 12 times 5 is 60 minus 12 times 3 fourths x is, let's just have scratch paper here. You can, of course, do this mentally. I just want to show it to you. 12 and 4 becomes 3. So we get 9x. And then 2 thirds x times 12 is equal to 4. 2x times 4 is x plus 22 times 12 is 264. Do not cancel it here. You have to either answer it mentally or you have to use scratch paper. Why is that? What if you cancel it here? 12, 3, this becomes 4. So you got 8x here. 4 times 2x is 8x. But when you now distribute it here, you might distribute 4 to 22 instead of 12. Alright, so be careful with that. Don't do this. Okay? So let's proceed. Let's now collect all the variables. 8x plus 9x is equal to all the constants on one side. 60 plus 264 will become minus 264. 8x plus 9x is 17x. 60 minus 264 is equal to negative 204. Now, we now divide both sides by 17. This gets cancelled out. x is equal to negative 204 over 17. That is equal to negative 12. Here is one more example involving fractions. The denominator is just 3, so we will multiply both sides by 3. And distribute. 3 times this, 3 will get cancelled out. So we have 2x minus 9 minus 3 times 2 is 6 x minus 3 over 3 times 3 in this case you can cancel. Why is that? There is only one term here. Before you proceed to the next step, always remember to simplify. 2x minus 9 minus 6 is 2x minus 15 equals x minus 3. Then I will collect all the variables on one side. 2x minus x is equal to, this is negative 3, I will put the minus 15 on this side. I get that x is equal to negative 3 plus 15 or 12. Next, take note that this is not a linear equation because we have an exponent of 2. However, don't be scared. Let's just do the operations first. Let us recall that if you are squaring a binomial, you square the first term, you square the second term, and this is always plus. Don't forget that you always have a middle term. The middle term copies the sign here. So this is minus, so what do you do? Multiply the two terms, but 
put a 2 in front of it. So it's twice the product of this 2. Going back to this one, what's now the square of x minus 4? You square the first term, you square the last term. The last term is always plus. And then the middle term, copy this, multiply 4 times x times 2. So that's 8x. Then I will copy this. Minus x squared is equal to 9. So you can notice here, x squared minus x squared, this term cancels out. So therefore, we just have negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 9. It's just a linear equation. I will get rid of 16. I will put it on the other side, 9 minus 16. So we have 8x is equal to 9 minus 16 is negative 7. Divide both sides by negative 8. We have that x is equal to 7 over 8. For our last example, again, don't be scared over here because look at this one. I have x squared and x squared over here. If I transpose x squared on this side, we have x squared minus x squared. So that will be 0, right? Or if you want, you can actually cancel it here. But remember that whenever you are canceling, make sure that you know the principle why you are canceling. We're just left with 2 times 3x minus 2. So I will now distribute that. 6x minus 4 is equal to 6x minus 4. Well, what do you know? 6x minus 4 is equal to 6x minus 4 by the reflexive property of equality. This is always true. So this means that we have here an identity equation. So therefore, the solution set is the set of all real numbers. Whatever value you plug in for x, the equation will always be true.